The Death of First Lady Sarah Polk, August 14, 1891. Following the end of his presidency, President Polk returned to Nashville with Sarah Polk, moving into a new home they had renovated to be known as Polk Place. Highly vulnerable during a cholera outbreak, he died three months after leaving office. James K. Polk died on June 15, 1849, and was buried on the grounds of Polk Place. His last words to Sarah were, I love you, Sarah, for all eternity, I love you. As a measure of his abiding love, Polk praised her in his will for standing by him throughout his public and private life. The youngest president in American history was dead at the age of 53, having had the shortest retirement of any former U.S. president. Widowed at the age of 45, Sarah Polk rarely left Polk Place for the nearly four decades that she survived him, except for attending church on Sundays and several visits to his and her family members in nearby Columbia and Murfreesboro, Tennessee. In 1850, Sarah Polk did travel to inspect her Yalabusa County, Mississippi cotton plantation. There on the plantation, they experienced a high infant mortality rate, 51%. And while she claimed that she didn't wish to sell individuals and break up families, however, she did so if it meant a profit for her. Whether it was declining profits or her own political savvy in detecting the imminent outbreak of the Civil War and eventual emancipation of slaves, she sold her plantation and all the enslaved in 1860, a year before the war began. During the Civil War, Sarah Polk declared herself neutral and welcomed both Union and Confederate military leaders to her home. When, however, she was asked to sign an oath of loyalty to the Union, as was required of all Nashville residents seeking to obtain coal, she refused. Later, she admitted that her sympathies were with the South, and she blamed the divisions within the Democratic Party during the 1860 election for the outbreak of war, believing the conflict could have been avoided through a legislation. Although she lived in relative isolation, removed from the realities of the Reconstruction South, she did maintain her interest in emerging technologies and had both a telegraph and telephone installed in her home. She was later given the honor of opening Cincinnati's Centennial Exposition by pressing an electric button connected by telegraph to the fair, setting the machinery in motion to signal the start of the event. Among her many distinguished guests were President and Mrs. Hayes in 1877, Later, when the Women's Christian Temperance Union assembled testimonies to honor Lucy Hayes, her fellow temperance first lady, Sarah Polk, was the first to sign the book. During the 1887 visit by President and Mrs. Cleveland, Sarah Polk spoke extensively with them about the rooms and changes made since she lived in the White House. After a short illness, Sarah Polk died on August 14, 1891, at age 87, and was buried next to her husband on the grounds of Polk Place. Two years later, after her death, the mansion was demolished and the remains of James and Sarah Polk were removed to the grounds of the state capitol in Nashville.